Hey y'all, good Sunday afternoon. Thought I'd peep my head out today and say, hey y'all, how y'all doing? Hope y'all having a wonderful, God bless Sunday. It's time to get dinner started. So I'm over here on the counter today. So I need this little extra space. So happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. We're going to get this dinner started. I've got to get down to the Arts Council um, in a little bit. We're doing our celebration down there. So uh, just want to say, hey, how y'all doing? Just give you a little smile and say all is well. Been really busy here lately, but anywho, here we go, y'all. Y'all know me. I'll figure out a way to do whatever I need to do. So today we're going to do fried pork chops, and we're going to do some, um, this is a new version. You're in the test kitchen again. I got all my uh, ingredients set up to do uh, this chicken this afternoon. Of course, I'm going to season it up real good. I'm going to pan fry it. Uh, and what I'm pan fried, what I'm seasoning with today is um, some turmeric and some uh, pink Himalayan sea salt. And I'm going to put all of my other regular uh, seasonings on there. So the man, and I'm sorry, black, so black pepper and turmeric are going to be the basic. Black, I'm sorry, okay, let's start over. Black pepper, a, tea, a tablespoon of each one of these, black pepper, here it is right here. I've already started it in my little dish right here. It's black pepper, or that Himalayan pink salt is what you see there, turmeric, and some of that pink Himalayan sea salt. So I'm gonna mix that up real good, rub that into my chicken, and then I'm going to uh, put my um, usual complete season on there, lightly uh, season it with that, and that um, turmeric, and that, um, pink Himalayan and that black pepper just going to give it a little bit different flavor and of course I'm going to saute those peppers and onions to go over it and we're going to serve it over none other than Uncle Ben's rice and I got that gigantic can of bean, green beans food line brand yes they are out of the can but you won't know it by the time I get it on the table okay so I just got my things laid out here and of course I'm going to do some cornbread um, yep food line messed around and did it I had never seen it. They had some self rising yellow cornmeal. I love yellow cornmeal. So we're going to stray away a little bit from the house archery and test out this. You see it, food lion, self rising yellow cornmeal mix. So we're going to mix it the same way we do the house archery and see what it tastes like when we're all done. So this is everything that I'm going to be cooking today, y'all. So give me a minute. I'm getting ready to get things rolling. I got this chicken cleaned up and the chops cleaned up. And we're going to come back and season them really well with all my usual season seasoning i've got like i said i've got the uh, complete seasoning and this seasoning here is everything that's in my cabinet so i'll use a little bit of that and that's the complete season i'm sure mine is complete seasoning plus plus but we're going to use all of that on this meat today to make it taste real good y'all know how it is when it comes to flavor the green beans i'm going to be cooking them with a stick of butter some onion uh, some of dry chicken bouillon seasoning and if I've got some kind of like cooking meat in my fridge I got to dig through the freezer if not the onions the butter uh, and the uh, dry chicken bouillon will season them up just like they need to be seasoned so give me a couple minutes here and I'm getting ready to get this stuff smoking so we can get it on the table because you know the flavor train they'll be pulling in here shortly so I'm excited to talk to y'all this evening I don't know what's going on with me today but I'm uber excited so hang on with me for a minute okay here we are y'all this chicken is all seasoned uh, with my mixture with that turmeric pink Himalayan sea salt black pepper okay y'all there it is the chicken is in the pan it is cooking I've got the first pan out just wanted to chime in and let y'all see what we're doing. So we're just going to brown it about that much on each side, which takes about two or three minutes. We're not trying to cook it all the way through, but just to uh, brown it on each side so we can get it into the oven here shortly. And as soon as I get these out, I'm going to go ahead and saute those uh, peppers and onions and put it right on top of this chicken. And uh, like I said, we'll get it into the oven. We'll be ready to roll. I think that one right there, well, doesn't matter. All of it's going the same way. It's going to run all over through the oven. Okay. So, that needs to cook another two or three minutes, and then we'll get it over here in the pan, and we'll, we'll return.
Okay, that chicken is about ready to come out and make way for the peppers and onions. So to dip it right on over here. And this pan here is the pan I'm going to be cooking it in. Not to let that one get away. Oh, my water just running over here, just running away. I thought it was just in the seat, but it's not. Okay. I am now going to get my peppers and onions going. Peppers and onions, these onions I'm going to leave on the pan are for my green beans. Okay. So that is now ready to receive the peppers and onions to the store fry. Y'all know I'm multitasking. Time for a little cleanup. You can't steal all of that grease burn onto the stove. Okay. What we're going to do is just saute these peppers and onions so they get sort of broken down a little bit so that flavor can burst up out of there as we make a little orgy pour on top hey gotta pour that it's gonna be poured right on top of that chicken and then I'm gonna put it in a 375 degree oven about 45 minutes is all that I need to cook and then I can get those pork chops going the green beans and the rice and the dinner will be ready. One of those meals that probably takes a bit, maybe a good hour, hour, 15 minutes, start to finish to get it on the stove cooked. And you do you have to use a little do ahead uh, sous chef stuff. You have to do it like that. Okay, and I'm just going to hit um, those onions and peppers with a little bit of complete seasoning. Uh, where's my garlic powder? A couple of teaspoons of garlic powder. Um, 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 black pepper is what I'm looking for. I'm going to do some, put some black pepper on there as soon as I figure out where I hid it. Did I hide it, y'all? Did I hide it? Did I hide it? Yep, I did. On the top of the hind view, so we're going to do about a teaspoon of black pepper. Black pepper is going to be a main ingredient in this dish. Um, okay. I did find a ham bone, y'all, in the fridge for my, uh, what, 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 for my, uh, uh green beans. So, that's going to be the seasoning. So, we're going to let those saute, and I'm going to throw a stick of butter into those uh, peppers and onions just to cream them up a little bit. Well, it's really a half a stick. I don't even make it too oily. So, that half a stick of butter. So, that's just going to bring those peppers and onions to another level of uh, taste. Butter, you know what butter does to a dish. I'm not quite sure. I've used lemongrass now. I know it has some kind of secret effect on eggs. I've dropped a little bit of lemongrass on eggs. We made the eggs taste a whole lot different. I don't know. I haven't figured out yet just quite what it is. But, um, you know how you can get these different flavors going for uh, different dishes? So I used that, and I haven't quite figured out what that flavor is. So, I might hit it with a little lemon glass. How about that? 
Mm. Ooh, I put something in my mouth and pop this in there. Now this is what fresh lemongrass looks like from the healthy store. So I'm just going to do this with the lemongrass on the onion. So the onion and butter. So we're going to serve about a half a teaspoon. So if, we don't, if you're doing something that's close to half a teaspoon, you don't hurt nothing. And I'm just going to go ahead and saute those up. I'm not going to make them too salty. You're not going to put a lot of salt content. <coughs> Oh, I was supposed to put carrots in there for extra color. And I'm still going to put my carrots in there. So this, these are my veggies for this. So just carrots. I only had probably about a half a pound, about a quarter of a pound, really. Just baby carrots. Just throw them in there for a little bit of uh, color. Okay. And this, of course, is going to go on top of that. Chicken yard, chicken, 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 chicken. This is very lightly seasoned. I need a little bit more salt in there. I'm gonna hit it with some of my seasoning mix that I made up. <clears throat> so another teaspoon of, we'll, we'll call it complete seasoning because you won't have this same one that I made up. And a teaspoon of, uh, Garlic powder. But that butter, I'm telling y'all, y'all just don't even understand. Y'all need, I, I use a lot of butter. Woo, lots of butter. Lots of butter. Yep, that is wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour me, as soon as I find it here, I got so many things going on now. I'm going to add some um, chicken bouillon, dry chicken bouillon cube mixture. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it to about half a cup of water. Yeah, about a half a cup of water. I'm just going to pour it right on top of there. Because what I'm going to do with this is pour it in my, uh, right over my chicken. Because this is what's going to, uh... okay. So this is ready to pour on top of that chicken. And then we're going to go ahead and run this chicken through the oven. So. Let's clean that stove off. I try to keep my uh, cooking area as I possibly can y'all so we just go I'm gonna switch places on the stove right here just to show y'all what I'm doing so we're gonna pour that everything out of the skillet yummy get that off the stove now what I'm going to do for about the first 30 minutes of this cooking time, I'm going to go ahead and cover it. So those nice onions and just let them fall down in between there. It, the juice is off course on the bottom. So I'll pull, just pull them through. Just pull them through like, like so. Doesn't that look good, y'all? Remember now, this is a huge pan of uh, chicken. This is like 15 nice size chicken thighs y'all okay i'm gonna lightly cover okay lightly cover it with some foil i'm gonna run through the oven for about 45 minutes at 375 well well what happened my oven went off okay start That's a nice piece of foil. And what I'm going to do, because I got a little lip on the end here, do it just like that. Turn that burner off. And uh, these are going in the oven for about 45 minutes. So 
And because this is a heavy cast iron pan, it'll help tenderize and complete the cooking process. So here it goes into the oven. Oh, can't put it in here. It's not at 170, 375. So it'll be going into the oven at 375 here shortly. Okay, y'all. I got those green beans. I had that big gallon can of green beans over there. Food line brand. I got them all in the pan here. <clears throat> what I put in here was just my usual suspects. I put um, water. Of course, I had, I had I use about three cups of water and then I season it up real good with all my everything in the cabinet uh, stick of butter uh, complete seasoning and if I have any kind of like cooking meat like this is like a ham bone I boiled it ahead of time in that three cups of water for, like, for about a good hour get the rest of it will season off that bone and then I it stirred up everything and of course you know when you do green beans out of a can you got to pour all that brine water off and what I do with mine I just rinse it real real good rinse the beans off real real good and before i put them into the water into that three cups of water with that boiled ham bone in there a stick of butter tablespoon of complete seasoning tablespoon of onion powder uh, a medium onion chopped up in there uh half teaspoon of salt and i'm just and then oh yeah fourth cup of sugar mix all that up together dump those beans in there and then i'm not and we're not going to cook them because they're already done. We're going to heat them through. So I got them on high heat right now for about five or six minutes. I'm going to stick the lead over them during that time frame. Then I'm going to take the lead off for a couple minutes. And then I'm just going to turn them off all together because we don't want them to get mushy. Because remember, they already cooked. We're just heating them through. Okay? Um, my dear husband taught me how to do green beans that taste really good like that. Out of the can. So we can cut down on the work on that so the green beans are working chickens in the oven getting ready to do the rice back here on the back burn i'm just going to do three cups of um uncle ben white rice and of course you know i'm going to season it up a little bit with some uh a little bit of a complete seasoning some garlic powder onion powder uh cook your rice according to the um instructions but uh you know if you want to season it up a little bit wonderful if you don't it's fine just white rice because what's going to go on top of that rice is going to be that um that chicken that pepper and uh turmeric pepper chicken is going to go on top of that rice we're going to have green beans and cornbread and we're going to sit down and relax and enjoy this meal here in about a good hour it's 3 30 we'll be eating by 4 30 okay all right i'll be back in a few shakes of a duck's tail as they say Hey y'all, I'm back. It's time to get these pork chops started. These are sort of thin chops. Uh, I'm going to turn the little fan on there a little bit so some of these, to dissolve some of that out. So what I'm going to do is just, <clears throat> what I did with these pork chops, I seasoned them up real good with all my same seasons I seen with the chicken pretty much. And I also put um, some half and half milk, just poured some half and half, half milk on like a dip. Uh, you know, just to crispy. Just give it a little extra crunch there. Be careful. Don't have the heat too high. I've had to turn this one off and back on because I had the heat so high. So while it cools down, I'm just going to continue to um, coat my chops here. Well, you can see here. I'm doing it right here. I'm coating these chops. Um, <clears throat> if you see one that missed the Seasoning, honey. Just grab the seasoning container because I don't want not one unseasoned. Okay, I mean, you have to do what you have to do sometimes. So just make sure they're well coated with the flour. Uh, of course, that little bit of cream will make it stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that burner back on. Yeah, I can turn it off. What I think I'm gonna do, I need a little bit more oil in my pan anyway. So I'm gonna pour me another half a cup of oil in that pan. These are thin chops, like I said, so it won't take that long to cook them. But we also don't want them to cook too fast because we don't want them to brown too much before they get done. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. When they're cooking like that, that's a perfect fry. Because, again, these are very thin. 
and we don't want them cooking too fast. That means they'll <coughs> brown up before they actually get done, even though they're thin. So I think I won't be able to get three of these to a pan. I think I got ten of these. So we'll have plenty of meat. Um, for the guys, I called the Anthony this morning. You get an answer, so I sent that's the Anthony. Y'all remember is my nephew, one of my favorites. What you got out? Yeah, one of my favorite is nephews. So, okay, these are in fry. We're gonna let them fry on each side for about five minutes. <coughs> oh, I got ten of them, so it's gonna take us a little bit of time to get all these done, y'all. Okay, but uh, medium high heat because they are thin. And even if they were thick, you don't want them frying up too fast because you don't want them to get brown before they get done. That's the whole premise of uh, chicken or pork chops, either way. You just don't want them to cook too fast. And that's what any food you cook. You don't want them to, if it's a browning thing, just like cornbread, you can put that cornbread in too, on too high of a heat and it can get going and get brown long before it got done. So. Remember, if you want to put a little extra added crisp, and see, I'm just looking at this. I'm just gonna. You have to keep watching these because you have to know. Uh, you can see that one right there is browning up on me, so I just back the heat off a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe just on that one end. I'm gonna check it here in just a few seconds. See exactly what's going on with it. I don't like to spear my chops. Start to find some chunks. Okay. Take these tongs and just lift it and see what's going on. See, that's already browned up. But I'm going to have to turn it several times to get these again. So that part, sometimes that part of your pan get hotter than others. And they're like, okay, that one. And then, you know what you do when they start browning up real fast? Continue to turn them. You know, back that heat off a little bit and flip them. Okay, so those are pretty. Uh, I'm just gonna let these continue to fry. I just wanted to let you catch y'all up to where I am with this Sunday dinner. Um, the gang will be here shortly. I'm supposed to do Cinco de Mayo at the Arts Council today, but you know what, y'all? It's looking more and more like I'm not gonna be able to. Dude, I got a late start today. I really got a late start. I thought I had 10 chops. Maybe I got. Hmm. How many chops do I have? Could be a few of those. I got a ton of chicken in there. I think I might have 8 chops. That's what I got. 8 pork chops. So that's a few. I don't know if I can. So everybody. We'll get pork chops. We'll leave our little pork chops. We'll leave our little pork chops. Oh, no, I'm not got more than that. I got mine. Okay. I'm having a side conversation with me, myself, and I over here. Uh, I'm not letting y'all see all this mess over here. Let me tell y'all one thing about cooking. You know, most chefs don't allow you here in their kitchen. It's because, you know, things can get messy and junky. And nobody wants that salt going through their brain when they think about what they're getting ready to eat. Not that it's not clean. It's just, you know, it's just not getting a little messy in there. So, I'm just like any other chef. I like my area clean. And when it gets messy, I don't want y'all seeing it. I mean, you know, how that works. You, you know, when you're cooking, there's no way for you to cook without making a mess of some sort, to some degree. Especially if you're dealing with flour and a lot of it. <coughs> Unless you got some kind of extra special thing going on and you do, please let me know. Because honey, my hands are so rough from the dishwater and pour out the water, trying to keep things clean. Because I can't stand it when it gets to a certain point. So I'm just trying to get the flour on these really, really good. And it is. So I will be back shortly, y'all. Okay, we're back in the pan. Look, when you all are frying chops and you get a little... Uh, thing like that, you take your scissors and cut it. You're going to have to cut it twice so you can lay it out flat, okay? Or a knife, you don't have cooking scissors. 
take a knife and cut it sort of brown evenly. Okay, y'all. First pan out, second pan in. So we just moving right along. And when y'all see this food again, it'll be ready to eat. I've got my cornbread uh, mixture all ready to go into the oven. Um, so remember now, I tried some new cornbread mix this time. It is a uh, full line brand. So, going in the oven here. My hot grease for my cornbread mixture. And um, getting ready to put it into the oven here shortly. Um, yeah, I know my usual recipe is two and a half cups of cornmeal mix, three fourths cup of brown sugar or white sugar, whichever one you got, a cup of oil, and two eggs, and a cup of milk. Um, and that's about the consistency, and it's ready to go into the oven for about 20 minutes, and we're going to have some good old, old-fashioned cornmeal. So I'll let y'all know if this uh, Food Line brand cornmeal mix is the one that you need to use. Okay? I'm thinking it is. It doesn't look any different. So, okay. There it is, y'all. Get ready to put it into the oven. That's still at 375 degrees because the uh, chicken is still in there. And it will be cooking approximately 20 minutes, and I think we've got uh, about that much longer to go on the chicken and the chops, and we'll be ready to eat here when the gang all gets here in about 15, 20 minutes. It might be a little bit after 4.30 when we eat, nonetheless. And we'll be close. Okay, so, you know what? I'll see y'all shortly. Okay, y'all, there it is. Everything is done. There's the rice, the green beans, the uh, chicken with the pepper and turmeric seasoning, fried pork chops, and good old sweet brown sugar cornbread. So we get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank y'all for tuning in with me and watching me cook and sitting back with me. Hope y'all are having a God bless Sunday. And listen, y'all, I'm going to sign out because it's hot in this kitchen. And I'm getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. So uh, remember what we always say. Keep those prayers going up until the blessings, so that the blessings will continue to come down. Thank y'all for tuning in. And listen, until I cook again, y'all, I'm going to say to the loo. Love you guys. I'm going to tell you what's good. Let me tell you what's good. Seriously, seriously. What's good is you get you a, just a plain pack of m and you got a chocolate cream. That's what I get when I... No, no, no. Listen, listen. Listen. But listen, though. No,